Caesar, this is fun. In a meeting of leaders, Donald Trump and Newt Gingrich... No, that doesn't work. In a meeting of minds, Donald Trump and Newt Gingrich... T no, that didn't really work either. It certainly... Okay, wait, I got it. In a meeting of arrogant, out-of-touch egomaniacs, Donald Trump and Newt Gingrich today... Look, somehow fit into the same room. This morning, La Donald appeared on three... Roll the tape anytime. Three separate networks about the debate uh, that uh, he's going to moderate and by the way he just happens to have a book coming out as well at the same time as the debate but one appearance trumped all the others that's a pun after berating the host he went into full slander mode mocking the religion of one GOP candidate while subtly slipping in more birther attacks against the president all right, let me just first start by saying that I was watching the show for about two minutes, and you said Donald Trump wanted to respond to a poll. Well, I didn't even know what poll you're talking about, number one, Chuck. Number two, I didn't call you. You called me about 40 yes, I did. times After... trying to get me on the show. Yeah. I didn't call you. So your statement is false. You said Donald Trump wanted to respond. I didn't want to respond. I'm doing NBC a favor by going on to your show. I know about polls. I know a lot about polls. I studied polls at the Wharton School of Finance. I wish you would just be straight, Chuck, because honestly, I think you'd do a lot better if you were straight. Well, I, I, I'm not interested in debating you. I want to ask you about your well, debate. Well, that's fine, but you've got to tell the truth, let Chuck. Me, let me ask you about hey, your Chuck, debate. you have to tell the truth. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Huntsman called my office a number of times trying to set up a meeting. I didn't have a meeting with him. And then he went on a debate, and he said, uh, I didn't meet with Mr. Trump like everybody else in the room. So, you know, I'm sure he'll tell the truth about that because he's a Mormon. Whether or not he was born here, you know, to me it means something, but I guess it doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people. But to me it happens to mean something. The fact that they can't find any records in the hospital that his mother was ever in the hospital, you know, that to me means something, but a lot of people don't care. Oh, that was the beginning of a busy morning for Trump as he also met with Newt Gingrich today. The big topic was Newt's plan for putting children to work, polishing Trump's head. Apparently this struck a personal chord with Trump. I was delighted this morning I suggested to uh, Donald Trump that uh, he adopt a program of apprentices uh, and take one of the poorer schools in New York City and create 10 apprenticeships that would be paid for part-time work. Uh, and uh, he liked the idea a lot. He understood exactly what I was getting at. He fit his own past, his own childhood, and his own experiences. Yes, forcing children as young as 13 from poor neighborhoods to work is exactly like working part-time for your father's multi-million dollar real estate company, the means by which you became a very rich man, by, you know, having a father who was a very, very, very rich man. At this point, let's turn to comedian and countdown contributor Maysoon Zayed. Thanks for your time tonight. Welcome to the cave. <laughs> it's great to be here. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. The, uh, the headline here clearly is the stuff that they spray paint onto Trump to make him look that color. Uh, every day he's supposed to come out looking like the poor girl, the victim in the Bond movie Goldfinger. Where he's mm -hmm. just sort of, they, they, they mixed it improperly today. What, do, was he actually this sort of sparkly lemon shade today, or was that just standing next to the pastiness of Newt Gingrich made him look that way? I believe the color that you're looking for there is chartreuse. Yes. Um, yep. He was chartreuse. And um, <laughs> I think that Newt Gingrich stole his hair from the Lego man. Yeah. Because he's had that scene. <laughs> <laughs> My question's less about the hair and a yeah. lot more about, like, when did it become mandatory that Trump pop your cherry in order for you to be a GOP <laughs> candidate? When, when was this written in the bylaws? Is this like skull and bones type of thing? They're going to pizza, they're going to Tiffany's. They're, what is this? When did he become kingmaker? When? Uh, maybe he's the one giving them all the money this year. That's the only thing I can think of. He doesn't of. have any money. He filed for bankruptcy like 13 different times. Well, yeah, that means, that means the people who work for you don't get their money. Oh, I see. Uh, the apprentice. Uh, also, the apprentice. <laughs> you save a lot of money if you're Donald Trump and all right. of your employees become 13-year-old children. This has not been a popular idea, child labor, mm -hmm. since Dickens. Mm -hmm. Gingrich has now hit this thing three times in two weeks. I'm thinking that he's slightly disconnected from American society, or uh, tell me I'm wrong. No, I, I, I feel like you're right, and I feel like the solution here is we have Gingrich and Trump go clean the bathrooms that he wants poor children to clean in their own schools. Have those two guys clean bathrooms, because I do not understand how he's getting paid $60,000 to talk about anything. This man should be totally irrelevant. The only use that society has for him is to clean bathrooms. 
And, and possibly you could just use either one of them. Their hair would make a very <laughs> effective brush if you held them by their legs. What Do we have any idea what else they talked about besides putting uh, young people who should be in school to work? I have a couple of ideas. I mean, obviously, they talked about Tiffany's because um, <laughs> Trump has a daughter named Tiffany. Right. Gingrich is addicted to Tiffany's. Right. They like child labor, so they like the whole blood diamond thing. <laughs> Maybe Spock on that. They could have possibly discussed his 84 ethics charges right. because that's a lot to talk about. <laughs> or maybe they talked about that fun little story where he bounced a check to the IRS. Oh, yes. Uh, memories. Memories. Yeah, I think Barney Frank's right. I think he'd make a hell of a nominee if you're a Democrat. Uh, Countdown contributor Mason Zaid, as ever, great thanks for, for some of your time tonight. And uh, uh, if you have any candles, just I, leave them on the way out. We have to back I'm not allowed up. to touch candles, Keith. No, Very dangerous. So, so what, what, that, what is that going to do here? <laughs> Right. That's true. Good to see you, dear. Thank you. Uh, all right, that's countdown for this. The 331st day since John Boehner and the Republicans took the House, thus 331 days in which the Republicans still haven't passed a jobs bill of any kind. I'm Keith Olbermann. Congrats on getting through another day of this crap. Good night and good luck.